Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to show my video off now and I'll share the screen. Okay. Okay. So the title of my talk is, uh, well, thank you for inviting me, uh, first of all. Uh, my, title of my talk, title of my talk is Minimal Integral Models for Principal Series Veil Characters. Um, it's a paper that I did with my advisor, uh, Dr. Luke Candelori, and it describes the results of my dissertation. Uh, please feel free to ask questions and interrupt me. I won't be proving all the theorems line by line, but they're quite accessible to uh, graduate students as well. Um, and the version of the proofs of my dissertation will be even more explicit. So in our paper, we prove a conjecture of Udo Reese about the minimal ring of definition for principal series VL characters of SL2 of FP for P and on prime. More precisely, we show that the ring, show that the P plus one divided by two dimensional veil characters can be realized over the ring of integers of Q adjoined with square root of epsilon P where epsilon is plus or minus one. And we provide explicit integral models over these quadratic rings. We do so by studying the Galois action on the integral models of the veil characters recently discovered by Elon Wong, who was postdoc at uh, LSU. Um, in this talk, I will explain why people should care about the VEI representations, and then I'll provide definitions, state the original representations of SL2 of FP, and then discuss the integral models of those representations. So why does anybody care about VEI characters? Well, they're used to study theta functions, i.e. modular forms. When generalized to a Grassmann algebra, they also appear in quantum field theory. There are also lots of number theory theoretic mathematical physicists such as Donaldson, Jones, Witten, and Konsevich, and they all won Fields medals for it. Uh, TQFTs are also related to knot theory, theory of four manifolds in algebraic topology, and theory of modulized spaces in algebraic geometry. Third, we can use the veil representations to determine all the irreducible representations of SL2 of Z mod NZ. And last but not least, it's a beautiful construct. It has great utility. I have a strong fondness for the veil representation. I stole that quote from HN Ward because without it, I probably would have chosen a different dissertation topic. That's a joke. Uh, so before I get to this definition, um, all right, go back. Uh, the veil representation was originally motivated by theoretical physics, uh, namely by quantization. It was first defined on the level of Lie algebras by L. Van Hove in 1951, and then on, Lee, on the level of Lie groups by I. E. Siegel and D. Shale in the 1960s. On the arithmetical side, in 1964, Andre Vey generalized this machinery to include all local fields in his paper, Sur certain groupe de operateurs unitaires. This is the main ingredient of Vey's of representation theoretic approach to theta functions. In fact, the theta functions can be interpreted as automorphic forms of a subgroup of a certain metaplectic group. Okay, so how does one construct the, or define the Vey representation? Uh, one way to construct the Vey representation is from the representation theory of the Heisenberg group. The, automorph the symmetric automorphisms that fix the center of the Heisenberg group is isomorphic to SL2 of FP. Um, I provide an exposition of this in my dissertation. Uh, the simplicity of this construction belies its power and utility. And as an added bonus, uh, a discrete Fourier transform appears, uh, much to the delight of this electrical engineer. Um, but Vey representations can also be defined using quadratic forms and their associated bilinear forms. Um, also, the notion of a Gauss sum is used in the definition. And different Vey representations can be used to obtain the irreducible representations of SL2 of FP. So now we can define a bilinear form. Um, bilinear form is a function of an abelian group that has bilinearity. Um, it's symmetric and it's non-degenerate. Um, I think the people in the audience understand this, so I'm gonna skip this. 
And then a definition of quadratic form. Let G be a finite abelian group. Quadratic form on a abelian group is a function that's even and has a form associated to it that's given by this expression that's bilinear. And then the level of a quadratic form is the smallest integer n such that n times a quadratic form is an integer for all elements in the group G. So a quick example, uh, let P be an odd prime. Let the map Q send X to X squared over P. Uh, then BXY is equal to 2XY over P. It's going to be bilinear. Uh, given by this expression, it's uh, fairly clear. It's symmetric because B of X, Y is equal to 2X, Y over P, which is the same as 2Y, X over P. It is not degenerate since if B, X, Y is zero for all Y, then X has to equal zero. And if B, X, Y is zero for all X, then Y is equal to zero. It's a quadratic form since its form is bilinear and it's an even function. Uh, and the level of Q of X is P. I will use this to construct the first uh, veil character later. Next, uh, the quadratic Gauss sum. For prime P, the quadratic Gauss sum can be expressed as follows. Epsilon is equal to square root of P if P is congruent to one mod four and square root of negative P if it's congruent to three mod four. Uh, M. Ron Murthy and C.D. Patak have a very, and an excellent elementary proof of this Gauss sum for zeta n where n is any natural number. It's a really good paper. Um, the generators for SL2FP that I'll be using are the quote standard unquote um, math frac s is equal to uh, this matrix here and math frac t is given by this. So the reducible p-dimensional veil representation of SL2 of FP's generators with a quadratic form Q and its bilinear form B is given by this expression for the generator math frac S and this expression for this matrix for math frac T. Uh, so this is where the discrete Fourier transform shows up. It's scaled, but this is a discrete Fourier transform and rho sub T is diagonal. We're going to exploit the diagonality of, Rosa, of uh, this representation later. In 1976, uh, Alexander Nobbs and Jurgen Wolfart wrote two papers that constructed all of the irreducible representations of SL2 of Z mod NZ uh, using the VA representations. This was the source where I learned this material. I had to translate the papers in English, and I typeset them. So if anybody wants a copy, uh, please let me know. Um, Dr. Elong Wong informed me that he and Samuel Wilson wrote a gap package to compute all of these irreducible representations in those two papers. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing with that package. Um, I hope Dr. Yang gives a talk on this at the virtual uh, AMS JMM later next month. So what are the types of irreducible representations for SL2 FP, P odd? Well, there's a trivial, there's a Steinberg, there's a principal series of dimension P plus one. There's a discrete cuspidal series of dimension P minus one. There's a cuspidal series. There are two cuspidal series representations, V representations of dimension P minus one divided by two. And the principal series V representation of dimension P plus one over two. So we know how to construct these irreducible representations of SL2 of FP. A follow-up question involves determining the smallest ring that contains the entries of these irreducible representations. So I'm gonna define a minimal integral model. Let rho be an irreducible complex representation of a finite group G of exponent E. Brouwer proved that there is a choice of a basis for V that is a model for rho, so that rho of G is a matrix with entries in the cyclotomic field Q adjoined with zeta E for all elements of G. 
If the basis can be chosen so that the matrix entries lie in the ring of integers Z adjoined with zeta E, we say that rho has an integral model over the ring R uh, equal to Z adjoined with zeta E. <clears throat> A minimal integral model R min is the minimum of all the integral models. That is, R min is the smallest string of definition. So it is known that, you know, trivial has Z. The Steinberg also has Z as its minimal integral model. And the principal series of dimension P plus one has Z adjoined with the principal root of unity. So in 2001, Udo Ries published a paper that proved the existence of the minimal integral models for the principal series of A characters and discrete series. He had some slick arguments involving uh, class field theory to prove that the representations can, under certain conditions, be realized over these minimal rings. However, there were no explicit constructions or examples. His paper can be framed in terms of algebraic K theory as well. However, that does not help us construct the representations that are realized over the minimal rings. So this is uh, Udo Ries's uh, central result in his paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let G equals SL2Q for some prime power Q. Every irreducible complex character of G can be written in the ring R equals Z adjoined with a principal uh, nth root of unity, where N is a proper divisor of the exponent of G, except in a cuspidal case. So focused on the corollary, which said, Every character of G, when it's uh, SL2P, can be realized over the ring of integers of the exponent of Gth subatomic field. And in that paper, he conjecture, he made the following question conjecture. Can Z, the principal series veil character dimension Q plus one over two, be realized over the ring of integers of Q adjoined uh, the Gauss sum, where yeah, it's a Gauss sum. That is over this ring, Z adjoined with half times one plus the Gauss sum. So why would Reese make this conjecture? Well, the character table, um, can everyone see this character table, these entries? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So why would he do that? Well, the character table gives the reason why. The traces of the veiled characters for several of the conjugacy classes um, have elements in that minimal ring, this one plus square root of epsilon times one half or negative one. So these entries lie in that uh, minimal ring. So it was a natural place to start. So in 2004, Dr. Gilmer, Dr. Mossbaum and Dr. Van Wamelen constructed a basis that achieved an integral model. <laughs> and in 2015, uh, Dr. Elon Wong provided a simpler proof in his dissertation. That's where I learned uh, the technique. And this is what they both proved uh, differently. Suppose P is an odd prime greater than five, then the genus one mapping class group representation given by this TQFT can be defined over this ring where the ring varies if it, the prime is congruent to three mod four or one mod four. In studying this uh, proof, uh, just treating SO2 P, treating the TQFT just as SL2 of FP, um, it can be modified to show that it achieves integrality of Z adjoined with the principal root of unity. And Dr. Ken, Laurie, and I are working on alternate proofs of integrality of the principal and cuspal series VL characters using sesquilinear forms and lattices. Uh, for this, we're revisiting. Uh, the paper by Dr. Gilmer uh, Mossbaum and uh, Van, Dr. Van Wamelen uh, to see if we can uh, use their arguments to uh, show that our discriminant uh, generates the entire lattice. Uh, and we'll probably have to look at uh, Dr. Jorge Morales' work on lattices as well. Uh, so thank you, LSU, for giving me a wealth of information. So we're getting closer to what uh, Reese conjectured in his um, paper, but not quite there. So let's uh, see what how to construct uh, zeta one or z one. 
So construction of the veil representation Z1, um, we use the quadratic form that we saw in the example and associate bilinear form, uh, you know, x squared over p is the quadratic form. Uh, the other veil character is done, the quadratic form is nx squared over p, where n is a quadratic non-residue modulo p. Step two, the veil representation, the reducible one, decompose in direct sum of rho q plus and rho q minus. We're interested in the plus. The q minus is discussed in uh, uh, the paper by Dr. Uh, Gilmer and his colleagues. And another mathematician by the name of Shaul Zamel has a very good integrality result on uh, the minus space. So we need uh, the minus space would be the cuspidal series veil characters. Um, we need p plus one over two basis vectors. So we choose the chronic or delta functions um, as the functions. So they're defined as such, they're even, so it gives us our basis. And then we next we construct a matrix whose column vectors are the basis vectors, call that capital B. Since the matrix B has full column rank, it's going to have a unique left inverse. And last step, we define the uh, capital S to be the principal series veil representation uh, of uh, math frac S to be this expression here, and similarly for T. In Sage, you would use the coordinate vector function for reducing it to a subspace, but uh, this one is a little bit faster to compute in Sage. Okay. So what do S and T look like? Well, the entries of S all have this interesting, uh, these interesting entries. Um, they're interesting because there's a denominator in each one of them. But T is a diagonal matrix and it's, it's integral. However, the representations are not, the model is not integral because both of them can only real, be realized over Z adjoint with uh, this fraction one over P and zeta P. And we can illustrate this with a simple example. Take P equals seven, and hopefully you can still see this. Uh, for S, you have this fraction seven everywhere. T is fine. For S, S is the issue. So these entries are not in the ring that is conjectured by Rees. So what do we do? Well, this is where uh, Dr. Elon Wong's technique comes in handy. Okay. Let R equal P minus one divided by two and let the theta J's be the eigenvalues of the T matrix, basically the diagonal entries of the T matrix. They're all distinct. And we construct the Vandermont matrix with this, call it VQ1. And this is going to be invertible. So now we can rephrase or revisit Dr. Wong's theorem. Suppose P is not prime greater than five, let ST be matrices of the principal series veil representations of the generators, math frac S and math frac T respectively. Then the matrices uh, with a change of basis by con conjugating by VQ we'll have entries in Z adjoined with zeta P. That is setting a Z, ZI prime of math frac S and ZI prime of math frac T to this, these two expressions. We yield explicit integral models uh, for the veil, principal series veil characters over the ring Z adjoined with the principal root of unity. So let's illustrate this with P equals 13 using uh, Dr. Wong's uh, change of basis technique. S has no fractions. They have something more interesting going on now, but they have no fractions. Uh, and neither does T. So I computed all the representations for all primes up to and including 53, and I noticed a pattern. It was rather serendipitous, so I was quite grateful. Uh, but it took some time, and Sage Math and MATLAB were both used and were quite indispensable uh, to verify the pattern. 
uh, it's obvious now what the pattern is, uh, but uh, no one else has worked on the problem, detected it, probably because they weren't looking for this pattern, is my guess. The pattern I noticed is that Elon Wong's change of basis does yield a minimal integral model. Uh, proving it was just as much fun, and Elon, being the great guy that he is, was quite happy to hear about it. Uh, yeah, I try to follow the advice of this uh, one Australian mathematical economist, which says, which said to, who said to try to understand a paper a little bit better than its author. So thank you, Elon. <laughs> so how do we prove that the entries lie in the minimum integral model? Well, we do so by analyzing the action of the Galois group. Um, over the integral models. The key observation in this analysis is the surprising compatibility between the Galois actions on the Vanderbilt matrix VQ and on the entries of the matrices of the veil representations rho Q for Q equals one, two. Q1, Q2, both uh, quadratic forms, okay. So by the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, the subfield must correspond to the subgroup H of index two. Where in the diagram, we choose a generator gamma and the subgroup generated by gamma is uh, isomorphic to Z mod P minus one Z. So gamma sends uh, the principal root of union zeta P to zeta p to the j where uh, j and 2r are co-prime. Then gamma squared sends zeta p to zeta p j squared, which sends squares to squares and non-squares to non-squares. And this is where the Gauss sum comes in. We can write the sums of square exponents and the sums of non-square exponents in terms of the quadratic Gauss sum. And this looks very familiar to the entries in the character table. And it is clear that both these terms are always contain the ring of integers. Uh, Z adjoined with one half times one plus the Gauss sum. So this leads to the first theorem. Let T prime be the change of basis of T, you know, conjugation by the Vanderbilt matrix VQ. Then the matrix entries of T lie in the minimal integral model that uh, Reese conjectured or stated. So proving this is fairly straightforward. Uh, T prime will have this form and as a minimal polynomial, oh, excuse me, characteristic polynomial uh, is given by this expression here. Since T and T prime are similar matrices, we know that M of X splits uh, as this expression and Q joined with zeta P, where the theta I's are the eigenvalues of the diagonal entries of T. In the case Q equals Q1, each theta J is the form zeta P to the S, where S is a square modulo P. And the case Q equals Q2, each theta I is of the form um, zeta P to the N, where N is not a square modulo P. In each case, the set of roots of the polynomial M of X is permuted by the index to subgroup H. So H fixes the coefficients of M of X, M of X since those are expressible in terms of elementary symmetric polynomials in the theta j's. Therefore, the coefficients ai of the characteristic polynomial lie in the quadratic extension q joining the Gauss sum. Since all the roots of unity belong to the ring of integers uh, z adjoined with zeta p, and since the symmetric polynomials have integral coefficients, it must follow that the coefficients AJ actually belong to the ring of integers of Q join the Gauss sum. Okay, so that ends proof theorem one. So 
let tau be equal to gamma square for notational convenience. Then the subgroup H is generated by tau. We define the action of tau on a matrix by applying tau to each entry of the matrix uh, <coughs> rho sub g uh, as follows. So the action of tau on the Van der Waal matrix sends squares to squares, non-squares to non-squares, and fixes one. So tau VQ is a matrix obtained by permuting the rows of the Vandermont matrix. Let P denote the permutation matrix correspond to the permutation of the rows of the Vandermont. Yeah, P times VQ. So interestingly, it turns out that the permutation matrix P also gives the Galois action of tau on the veil representation models for Z1 and Z2 given by the matrices, capital S and capital T, uh, mentioned earlier. This non-trivial compatibility between the Galois action on the Vandermont matrix VQ and the veil representation models is a key observation uh, of the paper. So this is the key theorem. Let Z1 and Z2 uh, be the explicit models for the principal series veil characters uh, determined by S, capital S, and capital T. Then for each um, of these representations for all odd primes, the permutation matrix P satisfies, you know, the action of tau on ZI is equal to the permutation matrix P times ZI times the inverse of the permutation matrix for all elements G and SL2 of FQ. Uh, this is the key theorem for the paper. So I'll give an outline of the proof for brevity. The character table entries of Z sub i and tau, at, tau acting on Z sub i are the same. So the representations are isomorphic. This implies that there exists a matrix M uniquely defined up to multiplication by scalar such that the action of tau on Z i is equal to M inverse times Z i times M for all elements in SL2 FP. We then have that M is equal to a scalar times the inverse of a permutation matrix and you know, permutation matrix is P times VQ as we said earlier. Next, we show that tau must commute with the, permut with the matrix P times M. Since T is a diagonal matrix whose entries are all distinct, it follows that P times M is a diagonal matrix and M is equal to P inverse times D. And last, we show that D is in fact scalar. The proof is not very involved. It's just, I can't fit it all onto a nice lot of Beamer slides, but there, it's explained fairly well in the paper and you have need more detail in my dissertation. So that leads us to S. So now let S prime be equal to the Vandermond inverse times S times the Vandermond. Then S prime has matrix entries in the minimal ring. So essentially for this proof, we wanna show that uh, the action of tau on S prime leaves it fixed. By theorem two, tau of S prime is this expression. Um, and it's just straightforward, very simple algebra. So tau S prime fixes S prime. So because it fixes it, the entries of S prime, prime lie in the quadratic extension, Q join the Gauss sum. But we also know from Wong's theorem that the entries of S prime belong to the ring of algebraic integers, Z joined with uh, zeta P. Therefore, they must lie in the ring of integers of Q joined with the Gauss sum. And that concludes the, uh, the paper. Um, these are the references uh, mentioned in the paper and in the talk. The paper has many more. So thank you for attending my talk. Uh, now, again, I wanna thank the LSU Math Department uh, 
especially Dr. Long uh, and Dr. Ng, as well as Elong Wong, Dr. Wong, for introducing this problem to uh, my advisor, uh, Dr. Louis Canlori. And a very big thank you, you know, Shen Shen Nin, uh, Elong Wong, for his argument using the Vanamore matrix for the uh, change of basis and for visiting Wayne State in uh, 2020. It was a very productive uh, visit. Any questions, comments, uh, snide remarks? <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah, I do. Uh, this is Richard Eng. So, yes, sir. It's a nice job. Uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, 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 I thank you for your uh, translation of Not Ben Bofak's paper, actually. Oh, okay, good. I'm, I'm glad uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, glad it'll be of use. Yeah, I use it occasionally because I cannot read German. Uh, Neither can so I. We have yeah. to lie. <laughs> thank so, you. I mean, it's about this. This one actually, uh, to me, is is interesting. Uh, so you have only one uh, principal series. What about the other? The Seder, the other, the other, the other p minus one dimension plane is known, but yes, the yes, other, okay. like p yeah. minus one, p plus Over two. one, and p. Yeah, the you p said minus p is integral. Right? You said p is integral. Yeah, p minus one over two. Uh, Shaul Zamel has a result. That, one, that on one should be known. I mean, this one should be known. I mean, what yeah. about p plus one? Yeah, P plus one is known. Yeah, the um... no, no. I, I mean, P plus one is also known. I mean, the minimal, the minimal. Do you, you, that means the minimal uh, model or minimal ring of integers. Yeah, it's known for P plus one. Yeah, P plus one is known. That's um, Reese mentions it in his paper as well. But P plus one is known. It's Z adjoined with uh, zeta P. Z adjoined uh, with zeta. With zeta P. Yeah, but the, you can see that there's a. I think there's a character there. There's a character of uh, order like P minus one. Something like that. Mm. 